Have you ever heard of the Buddhist custom of putting salt in your shoes? And do you know what exactly this ancient practice, which has its origins in the wisdom of Buddhists and Oriental medicine is for? Salt is known for its countless uses, not only in cooking. You probably already tried several thanks to suggestions from elders. In the kitchen, it is a formidable ally, and according to the most recent research, it is not the worst culprit in raising blood pressure. And its uses do not end here. Salt is in fact a precious ingredient even in domestic cleaning, because it helps to clean and cleanse. Furthermore, in the form of a saline solution, it is a powerful disinfectant for wounds and skin abrasions. Not to mention its uses as an exfoliating scrub, anti-dandruff remedy, bath salt, and we could go on forever. But few people know that for Buddhists, putting salt in their shoes has a very important meaning on both a spiritual and medical level. And we will see it in the Zen story that you will hear shortly, where you will discover five reasons why you should also try to put it in your shoes. So stay until the end because what we will reveal to you in the last minutes of the video will strike you deeply, leaving you speechless. But before continuing, if you are not yet one of us, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to be updated when we publish new content. In the heart of a valley surrounded by the mystical aura of the Japanese mountains stood an ancient Buddhist monastery, guardian of age-old wisdom and a place of refuge for those seeking inner peace. In this place where time seemed to have stopped lived the elderly and venerated monk Makoto, whose wisdom and profound understanding of the ways of Buddhism and Oriental medicine shone like the light of a candle in the night. One morning, as the golden rays of the sun filtered through the branches of the trees, Makoto gathered his disciples in the monastery cloister for one of the usual lessons. And with a serene expression, he invited them to sit in a circle around him and began to speak in a warm and reassuring voice. Every step we take on the path of life is a sacred journey, the monk began, a path that leads us to knowledge of ourselves and the universe that surrounds us. And just as when, to face a long and tiring journey, it is necessary to prepare adequately, so also in our earthly existence, we must be ready to face the challenges that await us. The disciples listened, enraptured by their master's words, and when Makoto mentioned the ancient custom of putting salt in shoes, their minds opened to the wonder of a tradition as ancient as it was mysterious. This practice, Makoto continued, has roots that go back to the remotest past when our ancestors walked through wild and impervious lands. In those distant times, salt was not just a condiment to enrich foods, but a precious commodity, a symbol of purity and protection. The senior monk took a moment's pause letting the words settle like delicate sand in the minds of his disciples, and then continued, I will now explain to you the five main reasons why the practice of putting salt in your shoes is so significant and important for our spiritual path and for our health in general. First, Makoto said, salt has the power to absorb moisture, just as the Buddha absorbed the suffering of the world. When we put salt in our shoes, it helps us keep our steps light and agile. In Buddhist practice, humility is often associated with the heaviness of worries and suffering that we carry with us along the path of life. Just as the weight of water filling our shoes in the rain slows and weighs down our pace, so the worries and tensions of the mind can hinder our progress towards inner peace and enlightenment. Putting salt in your shoes symbolizes the desire to free yourself from this burden, to let go of worries, and to maintain a lightness of spirit despite the challenges encountered along the way. Salt acts as an absorbent of these worries, allowing our steps to remain light and agile as we proceed in our search for inner peace and wisdom. To enhance the meaning of this aspect, Makoto told them the story of an old fisherman 
who during a storm had saved his boat from breaking thanks to a bag of salt that he had thrown on the deck to absorb the water. The second reason to put salt in your shoes, Makoto continued, is that salt has purifying properties. By assimilating impurities, salt purifies our path, freeing it from harmful influences and spiritual obstacles. Putting salt in our shoes, therefore, is a way to protect our mind and spirit from the deceptions and temptations of the outside world. To better explain this idea, the monk shared with his disciples the story of a traveler who, during his journey, had encountered a river infested with evil spirits. Thanks to the salt in his shoes, he was able to cross the river unscathed, protecting his mind and spirit from negative influences. The third reason, Makoto continued, is that salt helps us maintain balance, just as the mountains that surround us are symbols of stability and strength. Putting salt in our shoes also helps us too to root ourselves in the earth and to remain steadfast in the face of the storms of life. The mountains surrounding the monastery represent the image of stability and strength, said the monk. Just as these towering rock formations remain steadfast even in the face of the most violent storms, so we too must learn to maintain our inner stability as we face life's challenges. And putting salt in your shoes symbolizes this balance. The salt, in fact, acts as an anchor for our steps, stabilizing them and preventing unwanted falls along our path. When we walk with salted shoes, we feel more solid and rooted to the ground, as if we have a deep connection with the earth itself. This balance not only affects the body, but also the mind and spirit. Therefore, following this practice is an invitation to find the right balance between the different dimensions of our existence. Between work and rest, between action and contemplation, between joy and sadness, between good and evil. When we manage to maintain this balance, we can face life's challenges with serenity and determination without being shocked by the ups and downs we encounter along the spiritual path. To make the concept clearer, Makoto told them the story of a young monk who, during a meditation on the banks of a stormy mountain stream, had found perfect balance thanks to the salt he brought with him. As the disciples became more and more involved with the stories of their spiritual guide, Makoto continued with the fourth reason. Salt also has healing properties, he said. In oriental medicine, in fact, salt is considered a natural remedy to relieve pain and tension. Putting salt in your shoes can soothe not only the physical discomforts, but also the mental ones that we encounter along our spiritual path. To demonstrate this idea, the monk shared with his disciples the story of a farmer who, suffering from an open wound on his foot, had found relief by immersing his foot in a sudline solution. Continuing with the fifth reason, Makoto talked about how putting salt in your shoes was a gesture of gratitude. Salt is a precious gift from the earth, and using it mindfully reminds us to be grateful for all that life offers us both the joys and the challenges, said the master. The disciples listened to Makoto's words with deep reverence, grasping the wisdom behind that seemingly simple gesture, but the monk wasn't finished yet. Looking his disciples straight in the eyes, he added, my dears, there is a reason linked to this practice that I wanted to leave until last due to its importance. Putting salt in your shoes is a rite of passage that connects us to past generations and all the people who have walked this earth before us. Every grain of salt represents their stories, their challenges, and their victories. When we put it in our shoes, we join an eternal bond of wisdom and resilience that crosses time and space, transmitting their spirit and strength in our footsteps. Faced with this revelation, the disciples were speechless, contemplating the depth of this apparently simple gesture. They understood that, for Makoto, salt in shoes was not just an ancient practice or a symbol of protection and purification, 
but a connection to humanity itself and all the lives that have passed before them. Have you ever had the problem of sleeping in one position rather than another? Some people sleep on their stomachs, some on their right side and some on their left side. Then there are those who love to do it curled up in a fetal position and those on their stomach. And again, there are those who love wearing pajamas and those who don't. There are those who love having blankets on and those, however, who want to feel free. Well, if you are among those who have never asked themselves the problem, thanks to the Zen story that follows, you will discover what happens if you sleep on your left side. So, stay until the end, because what you will hear will leave you breathless and will make you seriously reconsider the way you are used to sleeping. In a quiet Buddhist monastery located among the mountains of Japan, immersed in the serenity of the gardens, the elderly and wise monk Shinzo decided to dedicate a special evening to sharing profound truths about the way we are used to sleeping. The moon, bright and round in the night sky, seemed to bless the atmosphere of contemplation that spread among the devoted disciples gathered in the main hall. Shinzo, sitting on a tatami, began to speak in a calm voice, as if his words were a light breeze that caressed the minds of those who listened to him. Today, dear disciples, we will see why sleeping on your left side is the best thing you can do for your physical health and emotional well-being, the monk began. We will explore together the profound connections between the practice of left-sided sleep the benefits for our body and spiritual awakening. Finally, you will understand why Buddhist monks have been sleeping on their left side for centuries. While the disciples were increasingly fascinated and intrigued by the topic, Shinzo continued his speech. In the ancient Eastern tradition, the connection between the body, the mind, and the spirit was an essential part of the path to wisdom and balance. And sleeping on the left side has always been of great importance. This choice is not random, but reflects a profound understanding of the physiological and spiritual principles that guide the practice of sleep. The first advantage of sleeping on the left side, said the monk, is to achieve optimal lymphatic drainage. Lymph flows through our body, and it is important that it does so like a quiet river that flows gracefully through the earth. You should know that the left side of our body is the guardian of this vital flow because it carries with it a load of proteins, glucose, and other substances. Sleeping on this side is like offering a clear path to the river, allowing our body to rid itself of toxins, a bit like a river carries the dry leaves of drifting trees. With a benevolent look, Shinzo turned to his disciples masterfully narrating the second gift. The stomach and the pancreas are a bit like the deities of our internal temple, said Shinzo. When we lie on our left side, we create a sacred space for the dance of these two organs, which cause gastric juices to move with the grace of dancers in a theatrical performance. You see, sleeping like this isn't just a physical act. It's an invitation to an internal celebration, a silent celebration of enzymes preparing our body for a new day. The monk, happy to see the disciples so interested in his words, continued talking about the third gift deriving from sleeping on the left side, purification, a true nocturnal ritual. Resting on your left side, he said, facilitates the flow of digestive waste, like a stream flowing through fertile soil. The intestine becomes the garden where nutrients are deposited, and in the morning, our body prepares for an elimination ceremony, a daily rebirth. Under the soft light that filled the room, Shinzo elaborated on another benefit of sleeping on the left side, talking about the love of the heart. Our heart is the ruler of our body, he said with a smile. By sleeping on the left side, we offer the heart a perfect backdrop for its work. The aorta, its messenger, starts in a majestic arch towards the left side, like a traveler crossing a bridge, making the journey easier 
and the blood flow more harmonious. The monk stood up slightly as if dancing along with his tails and continued with the fifth gift. And now let's talk about the spleen, the devoted handmaiden. This hidden organ, guardian of our life force, finds peace when we lie on our left side. Bodily fluids become messengers of this peace, making their way to the spleen like pilgrims arriving at a secret sanctuary, nourishing and invigorating. And how have you slept until today? Write it in the comments and let's discuss the topic. In the meantime, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and share it. You will help us produce new content every day for your spiritual growth. With a deep gaze, Shinzo introduced the sixth gift with a touch of poetry, like nature following the course of the river, sleeping on the left side is an act of connection with gravity, the silent master who guides our journey night. The force of gravity becomes the guardian of the pathways of our lymphatic drainage, a silent companion that accompanies our body through its purification ritual. In resting on the left side, the master continued, we also find balance between body and mind, Sleeping on the left side is not just an act of comfort for the internal organs and for our body in general. Ancient Oriental wisdom teaches us that this way of resting enriches our health and our connection with the internal and external world. It is a true hymn to life, which reveals itself in the dreams and quiet of the left side. Sleeping in this way then is not just a rest for the body, but an opportunity for inner awakening and spiritual awakening. While the world lies in deep sleep, we, as practitioners of left-sided conscious sleep, we immerse ourselves in the depths of being. It is a sacred moment in which the mind frees itself from the chains of everyday thought, opening subtle doors to universal awareness. Shinzo, still smiling at his disciples, explain the concept of the balance between yin and yang in sleep. The left side, in its more yin nature, envelops us like an embrace of the night. The quiet that arises from this practice is a gift, an offering to our inner essence. Through concrete examples, Shinzo told of nights in which the monks, immersed in the practice of conscious sleep on the left side, felt the energy flow like a calm river crossing their being. The vital energies, in harmony with nature, dance while the body rests, creating a harmony that resonates in the entire monastery. The benefits of this practice, therefore, go far beyond the physical aspect involving the spiritual one. Delving deeper into the analysis of the physical benefits, Shinzo told of elderly monks who, by embracing this practice, had experienced greater flexibility and strength in their meditation practice. Sleeping on the left side thus becomes a perfect complement to the search for enlightenment, preparing the ground for the mind and body. The monk, between one story and another, underlined the importance of bringing this awareness into everyday life, making it a healthy habit to never give up. It is not only in the quiet of the monastery that we can cultivate this practice, he underlined. Let us bring it with us into our homes, honoring our body as a temple in which the sacredness of the night resides. Shinzo, focusing on the sounds of the saccadas and the river that could be heard around a monastery, added, Nature itself teaches us the importance of aligning our sleep with the flow of the world. The left side, like a leaf cradled by the wind, connects us to this eternal dance. As his disciples listened with great interest, Shinzo shared other important benefits of sleeping on the left side. Sleeping on this side, he said, facilitates breathing, creating a harmonious synergy between the flow of air and the beating of the heart. When you lie on your left side, your trachea and esophagus take on a more natural and straight position relative to your spine. This alignment facilitates the passage of air through the trachea and towards the lungs, facilitating freer breathing. Additionally, the diaphragm, the main muscle involved in breathing, is located under the lungs. Sleeping on your left side allows your diaphragm to move more freely, 
promoting deep, smooth breathing. And the location of the heart on the left side of the chest is another key element. Sleeping on this side, in fact, reduces pressure on the heart and allows better blood circulation. Sleeping on your left side can help prevent acid reflux as well. With this position, the stomach sits lower than the esophagus, reducing the risk of gastric juices backing up into the esophagus. And then, added Shinzo, sleeping like this offers natural support to the spine, maintaining optimal alignment for a tension-free awakening. Have you ever noticed, asked the monk, that the spine has a natural S-shaped curvature? When lying on your left side, this position better reflects the natural anatomical curvature of your spine, minimizing stress on your discs and joints. Remember, said the monk, that sleeping on your left side is not only a way to make your body rest better, but becomes a path to awareness and spiritual growth. Just as Buddhist monks, being aware of the interconnection between body and mind have always adopted the left side as the privileged position for sleep, you too should get used to doing so. This way, both your body and your mind will feel better. Do you often wake up between 3 and 5 in the morning? And have you ever felt the feeling of uneasiness or curiosity when this happens? In this video, thanks to a Zen story, we will see what it means to wake up recurrently at these times. Together, we will explore the mysteries behind these moments and discover how they can offer an opportunity for personal and spiritual growth. So stay until the end, because you will discover that these nocturnal awakenings can reveal much more than you think. In an ancient Buddhist monastery located among the mountains of Tibet, lived the monk Kiro, famous for his vast wisdom. His lessons on awareness and compassion were renowned far and wide, and disciples came to him from afar to learn from his teachings. One evening, while twilight colored the sky with shades of red and gold, Kiro gathered his disciples in the main hall to answer a question they had asked him several times. Why do some people wake up most nights between three and five while others don't? Are these awakenings phenomena related to chance, or do they have a meaning? Dear disciples, Kiro began in a calm voice, Today, we will explore nocturnal awakenings and their connection to Eastern medicine and Buddhist wisdom. In Eastern medicine, Kiro continued, night awakenings are believed to be linked to body's energy meridians and their influences on us. Kiro proceeded to explain how each night waking time was associated with a particular organ or system of the body, and how Eastern medicine viewed these awakenings as signs of energetic or emotional imbalance that required attention and care. For example, Kiro said, Waking up between 3 and 5 in the morning is associated with the lungs and emotions of sadness, this could indicate a need to address and heal deep emotional wounds, thus allowing our energy vital to flow freely. The disciples nodded, reflecting on their master's words and trying to apply them to their own experience. Master, one of them asked, how can we interpret night awakenings in the light of Buddhist wisdom? Kiro smiled, recognizing his student's deep curiosity. In Buddhism, he replied, Every moment of the day is an opportunity to practice mindfulness and compassion. Nighttime awakenings offer us a unique window to explore our mental and emotional states without the distractions we have during the day. Kiro shared stories of ancient Buddhist masters who, through meditation and contemplation, had transformed their nocturnal awakenings into opportunities to deepen their understanding of the human mind and soul. The Buddha taught that waking up at night can be seen as an invitation to develop awareness and kindness towards ourselves and others, Kiro said. It is a time to embrace our experiences without judgment, thus allowing inner wisdom to emerge and move us forward along our path of spiritual rebirth. The disciples, listening with gratitude, 
felt inspired by the profound union between Eastern medicine and Buddhist wisdom that their master had outlined. Remember, Kiro added that every waking night is an opportunity to grow, learn, and connect with the deepest part of ourselves. Be grateful for these moments of awareness, for they are precious gifts on the path to spiritual fulfillment. But now let's see in more detail which areas of life are affected by nocturnal awakenings so that you can better analyze yourself and others. Stress and anxiety accumulated during the day can manifest themselves in waking up at night between three and five in the morning. This is because during these hours, the human body is naturally predisposed to release peaks of cortisol, the stress hormone, if these levels are already high due to daily worries, you are likely to experience nocturnal awakenings. And in these cases, practices like meditation, deep breathing and muscle relaxation can help reduce stress and promote deeper sleep. My suggestion therefore is to get used to meditating for at least 10 minutes before going to bed. This way you will prepare yourself to sleep more peacefully. Awakenings at these particular hours of the night are associated with the lungs in Chinese medicine and with sadness according to Eastern psychology. This may indicate the presence of repressed or unprocessed emotions, such as grief, loss, or loneliness. Facing and accepting these emotions is fundamental to inner healing. Practicing mindfulness and exploring emotions through writing or therapy can help you understand and integrate these emotional experiences. If you have suffered negative experiences of this type, I recommend you work on yourself in order to process them and find inner peace and emotional balance. Looking into the eyes of his disciples, Hiro continued his lesson. In the Eastern spiritual tradition, the early hours of the morning are considered a privileged time for connection with the divine and for spiritual practice. During this period of tranquility and silence, it is easier to get lost in meditation, prayer, or deep contemplation. Consider that many people wake up at these hours precisely because their deepest self needs to connect with the divine. And many practitioners, however, find that waking up specifically between three and five in the morning is an opportunity to experience greater spiritual presence and awareness, opening the door to new insights and spiritual realizations. These nocturnal awakenings, Hero continued, can also be interpreted as signs of a process of inner transformation and personal growth. During these hours, the subconscious may be more active, bringing hidden emotions, thoughts, and desires to the surface. This can be a time to deeply explore your psyche and to identify what changes or transformations are necessary to live a more authentic and meaningful life. Some nocturnal awakenings, however, can be caused by physical disorders such as acid reflux, insomnia or sleep apnea, liver problems. These disorders can interrupt sleep and cause frequent awakenings during these hours. Eastern medicine suggests various remedies for these conditions. However, if you think you may have such problems, consult the doctor to identify and treat the underlying cause of these physical ailments. Eradicating these problems at the root allows you to improve the quality of sleep and promote emotional and general well-being. As the disciples continue to listen to the monk's words with great attention, Hero introduced another important aspect, the period from three to five in the morning, he said, is considered a time when the unconscious can communicate important messages through dreams and awakenings. This theory is suggested by both the ancient Zen wisdom and the analytical psychology of Carl Gustav Jung. These messages can be symbolic or intuitive and can provide valuable insights into our inner lives relationships or challenges we are facing. Keeping a dream diary or practicing meditation before sleep can help capture and interpret these unconscious messages. If you write them down immediately, the next day you will have the opportunity to remember them 
and be able to use them in your growth process. Another reason why some of us wake up at those times, according to Eastern tradition, is linked to the natural rhythms of the universe. The early hours of the morning, in fact, are considered a time when vital energy is concentrated and flows more freely. Waking during this time may indicate an alignment with these natural cycles or a need to adapt to them to promote health and well-being. Practices such as yoga, tai chi, or meditation can help harmonize the body, mind, and spirit with the rhythms of nature. So, my dears, consider practicing them. A disciple asked, Master Hero, should we ultimately be worried if we often wake up at these times? My dears, said the monk, I would look at these awakenings as a precious opportunity to explore the depths of our mind, our spirit, and even our body. If an awakening suggests a physical problem to us, we will know we need to take care of it. If it suggests a spiritual meaning to us, we will know we have to work on it. Remember, through Eastern wisdom and heartfelt compassion, to learn to welcome these moments as precious gifts along the journey of life. Every nocturnal awakening is an invitation to greater awareness and understanding of ourselves and the world around us. So, instead of resisting or ignoring these awakenings, we can welcome them with kindness and openness, allowing them to illuminate our path to spiritual fulfillment. The best thing you can do is create a space of quiet and reflection before going to bed, allowing your mind and body to completely relax. Practices like meditation, deep breathing, or reading inspirational texts can prepare you for a more restful, deep sleep. And when you wake up between 3 and 5 in the morning, take this phenomenon as an opportunity to explore your inner self and connect with your deepest essence. Have you ever wanted to help someone even though they didn't explicitly ask you to? And how did it go? And have you ever wondered if your good intentions could, in fact, have caused a negative ripple effect that you weren't aware of? In the Zen story you are about to hear, we will see that not helping others, unless they ask you, is best for them and for yourself. So stay until the end because what you discover thanks to Buddhist wisdom could change the way you see the world of human relationships. In essence, you will see how helping those who do not want to be helped can have negative repercussions on your life and theirs, and you will discover how your karma will be affected. In a quiet Buddhist monastery, surrounded by lush gardens and ancient trees, the old and sagacious monk Norio gathered his disciples to talk about a topic very close to everyone's hearts. His curiosity was palpable and his eyes were fixed on Norio. They all wanted to understand more about the reasons why, when they had helped someone, things had not gone as they would have liked. Life is like a great river, and each of us is a small boat navigating this tumultuous course, Norio began in a calm voice. Often we tend to jump into that current, trying to steer other people's boats without waiting to be asked. To make the metaphor he had just used understand, Norio shared a story passed down through the centuries. He spoke of a young monk eager to help a companion in difficulty without being asked. The monk's intervention, although well-intentioned, caused a succession of unexpected events, creating an intricate labyrinth of challenges, even dramatic, for both. You should know, Norio continued, that suffering is a necessary lesson in our spiritual growth. Each individual, like a jewel, is shaped by the pressures of life and the challenges they face. But when we intervene without being called, we rob them of the opportunity to learn, grow, and train. To further clarify his lesson, Norio spoke of two friends, Shoin and Masu, who had shared joys and sorrows since their school days. One day, Shoin heard about the financial problems Masu had found himself in and decided to secretly help him by paying off some debts that his friend couldn't pay. His intentions, said the master, were naturally good. 
However, Shoin's gesture had unexpected and disastrous consequences. Masu, although grateful to his friend for the unsolicited help, was deprived of the opportunity to resolve the situation in his own way. Additionally, he noted that Shoin had discovered some details about his personal life that he would have preferred to keep confidential. On the one hand, this led Masu to feel an emotional detachment from his friend. On the other hand, Shoin began to feel a growing strain on the friendship. He felt that his act of kindness had not produced the relief he had hoped for, but had instead generated a sense of shame and a change in the dynamic of the friendship itself. In short, unsolicited help had created discord and confusion, demonstrating how, in life, even good deeds can have unexpected consequences. What we often don't understand is that each individual is at the mercy of their own karma, Norio explained, and every action we take, good or bad, comes back to us like an echo. When we help without being asked to do so, we upset the delicate balance of another person's karma and paradoxically harm our own as well. The old monk told other stories, such as that of a young man who, eager to solve the problems of a dear friend without her having asked him, found himself involved in a series of endless difficulties and misadventures. If you enter a labyrinth that is not yours but someone else's without being asked, Norio continued, you could set off a chain reaction of events, creating an intricate web of karmic connections. And your gesture of friendship, no matter how absurd it may seem, could end up doing more harm to the friend in question and to yourself. Imagine wanting to cure someone without asking them if they are willing to give up the things that made them sick. Norio said, Suffering is often caused by past actions, and our intervention could alter the natural course of learning that the individual should ultimately experience. Norio then went on to talk about Buddhist teachings, highlighting how even he himself had resisted the temptation to intervene without request. Buddha, the monk explained, had understood the sacredness of the individual learning process and how the karma of each being must be respected. Suffering is a very severe but precious teacher, Norio continued, using other everyday examples to better illustrate the concept. He spoke of the many moments when, seeing a friend or family member in difficulty, empathy pushed him to offer help. And how, instead, Buddha taught the wisdom of waiting for the person themselves to ask for help. Suffering is almost always the result of past actions, and karma is the supreme law that governs the universe, Norio said. When we intervene unsolicited, we enter a karmic vortex that can drag us into other people's problems with unpredictable consequences for both of us. Remember, suffering is like a teacher who guides us along the path of spiritual growth, said Norio. To interfere with this process is to deprive others of the wisdom that only suffering itself can teach. Norio told other stories about daily life at the monastery showing how the monks apply these teachings in daily practice. Dozens of monks I have trained, he added, became wiser and more self-confident men precisely because I avoided intervening directly in their problems. By resisting the temptation to intervene to solve certain problems, I allowed them to face their own challenges and learn the lessons that karma had in store for them. Every action we take is like throwing a stone into a pond, Norio said, using a metaphor to clarify the concept. The ripples spread and return to us. When we help without asking, we not only influence the karma of others, but we create ripples that can impact our own lives. In conclusion, what do we understand from this story, and how can you help us? The more we can draw from this story is a reminder of the wisdom of discerning when to reach out and when to wait. Karma, like an unbroken river, carries our actions with it, 
and the way we offer our help can alter the very structure of destiny. Before reaching out to help someone, we must reflect on what they really need. Norio admonished. Not everyone seeks advice. Sometimes they just need a listening ear and an understanding heart. Therefore, let us always remember to respect the sacredness of the individual path of each human being. Help should never be an impulsive act, but rather a conscious gesture, respectful of free will, and the path of personal and spiritual growth of others and ourselves. Life is an intricate web of lessons and opportunities for growth. When we offer our help without being called, we can deprive others of the precious opportunity to learn about themselves. Wisdom lies in recognizing that sometimes the best lesson is the one learned through one's own effort and experience. Therefore, let our help be a beacon of light, offered when requested with awareness and respect, rather than a chain of unexpected events. Did you know that there are at least nine strange events that happen to you while you sleep? How many times has it happened to you, during the night, to suddenly wake up in the grip of very strange sensations? During the night, our body abandons itself to rest, and the mind ventures on a journey without borders, among the folds of dreams and visions. But are dreams just the figment of our imagination, or do they lead us to deeper truths? And what secrets do the night hours hide when the soul seems to wander between invisible worlds? In the Zen story you are about to hear, we will explore the strangest spiritual events that happen to us while we sleep. So stay until the end, so you don't miss a single one, only in this way will you understand if you too have experienced certain events. In the remote mountains of Japan, among silent forests and winding paths, stood an ancient Buddhist temple where the wise monk Shinzo spent his days teaching his followers the path to enlightenment. One evening, as the sun was preparing to set behind the mountain peaks, the disciples gathered around the fire in the temple courtyard eager to listen to the master's words. One of them, with eyes shining with curiosity, dared to break the silence. Master Shinzo, he said respectfully, what are the strange things that happen when we sleep? The old monk smiled wisely, searching the eyes of his followers with deep understanding. The strange things that happen during sleep, he replied in a calm voice, are profound truths that are revealed only to those who know how to listen to them with their hearts open. In the mysterious kingdom of the night, when the sky is painted with stars and the moon rises silently like a guardian of sleep, the world takes on an aura of enchantment and mystery. And it is precisely during these dark hours that our body abandons itself to rest and the mind ventures on a journey without borders Sleep thus becomes a portal to unknown dimensions, an opportunity to explore the depths of the soul and discover hidden truths. With an eloquent gesture of his hand, Shinzo invited his disciples to come closer to him and thus began to tell a story that would lead them through the mysteries of sleep and spirituality. One night, in a remote village in the mountains, Shinzo began, a young monk named Kaito had an extraordinary dream. The firelight danced across his wrinkled face as the disciples listened curiously. In this dream, Shinzo continued, Kaito walked along a moonlit path surrounded by an atmosphere of serenity and mystery. It was not just any dream, but a prophetic dream, the monk explained a sign of the mind's power to penetrate beyond the veil of time. Next, Kaido found himself crossing invisible boundaries and traveling through unknown worlds, soaring beyond his physical body, Shinzo continued. It was a real astral journey, an exploration of the vastness of the universe and our connection with it, said the monk looking into the eyes of his disciples. During his journey, Shinzo recounted, Kato encountered spirits of ancient masters 
who offered him wisdom and guided him on his path. Communications with spirits, Shinzo stated, are a reflection of our inner search and connection with the divine that permeates everything. In another dream, the monk continued, Kato experienced profound spiritual healing as his spirit was regenerated in his sleep. Spiritual healing, he said, is a process of purification of the soul that brings us to true self-awareness. During his dream journey, Shinzo continued, Kaito felt himself lifted from his body and floated above it, free from earthly bonds. Out-of-body experiences, he explained, remind us that we are more than what we see, that our essence extends beyond the confines of our skin. During his dream, a monk narrated, Kato came into contact with his higher self, realizing his connection to the universe. Contact with the higher self, said Shinzo, is an experience of unity and enlightenment that shows us the ultimate truth of our existence. Kato's dreams were full of symbols and hidden meanings, Shinzo continued, which guided him on his spiritual path. Dream work, he explained, is an opportunity to explore the unconscious and integrate hidden parts of our psyche. And finally, just before he awoke, Kato had a sudden epiphany. Shinzo concluded, a vision of the ultimate truth that illuminated his soul, making him understand many things about himself. But what is hidden behind what I told you? Asked Master Shinzo rhetorically. Now we will see exactly what path Kato took during his dreams, he added. First of all, I told you about his prophetic dreams. Shinzo began with a compassionate smile. They are like luminous paths that lead us to the future. Remember when a village elder dreamed of an impending storm and warned us in time? Dreams give us a vision of the time to come, offering us precious insights to navigate the waters of life. Before finishing Shinzo's story, we ask you to leave a comment with your experiences, and if you are appreciating the video, like and share it, so we can continue to produce new content like this every day. Another experience lived by Kaido, and which I spoke to you about, is that of astral travel, continued the monk. These are like journeys of the soul through the vast universe of the spirit. Imagine soaring above the snow-capped mountains and dancing among the stars, exploring worlds of light and beauty beyond the veil of matter. In these moments, our spirit frees itself from the chains of the body and sigurs the freedom of the infinity that surrounds us. Another event Kato experienced in his dreams was that he communicated with the spirits of the old and wise masters, Shinzo said calmly. These communications, he continued, are like sweet melodies that resonate in the silence of the night. Every time we dream of meeting a deceased loved one or receiving a message from the angels, it is as if the sky itself bends towards us, offering us comfort and wisdom for our earthly journey. Spiritual healing, the monk continued with deep compassion, is like a loving embrace of the universe that envelops our wounded spirit, and it is another event that happens during the hours of sleep. When we fall asleep, our body regenerates and the soul finds inner peace in the arms of the divine. Every night, in essence, we are surrounded by unconditional love that heals our deepest wounds. Continuing the lesson, Shinzo spoke about out-of-body experiences explaining that they are like flights of the soul into unknown and wonderful worlds. During sleep, we can leave our physical bodies and venture into spiritual places, meeting beings of light and receiving teachings directly from angels. It is an experience that reminds us of our true spiritual nature and our connection to the divine, an experience through which we can mend the wounds we carry in our hearts and souls. Contacts with the higher self, said the monk in a serene voice, are like sweet caresses of the soul that guide us towards our spiritual mission. During sleep, we get closer to our higher self 
and receive clear intuitions and visions that illuminate our path. It is as if our spirit were reunited with the divine source from which everything originates. The dream work, Shinzo continued with profound wisdom, is another of the events I told you about in the story about Kaido. It is like a silent dialogue between us and our unconscious, which reveals the secrets of the soul to us. In fact, through the symbols and images that dreams bring with them, we can discover hidden truths and face our fears and challenges with courage and awareness. Remember, dear disciples, that every dream is a piece of the puzzle of the soul that helps us understand who we really are and where we are going. Night meditation, said the monk, is another experience Kaido has had, and it is like a silent prayer that brings us closer to the divine and allows us to achieve enlightenment. Before falling asleep, let's immerse ourselves in a state of meditation that prepares us for a deep and meaningful sleep. It is a way to open our hearts and minds to the divine presence that envelops us in an embrace of love. Do you remember what happened to Kaito at the end of his dream? Asked the monk. He had an epiphany, concluded Shinzo with a radiant smile, and illuminations are like flashes of wisdom that pierce the veil of ignorance. During sleep, in fact, we can experience moments of spiritual awakening in which we perceive the ultimate truth of existence and the beauty of the universe. It is a transformative experience that brings us into the light of divine awareness. The experience of enlightenment, he said, is the culmination of our spiritual journey and awakening to the supreme truth, the ultimate goal of a night of deep and restorative sleep.